Governor Allen, you, you have uh, 90 seconds to respond, agree with, disagree with what Governor Kane has said. Well, in some part I agree, and some I have a slightly different view, but on the most part, um, an agreement. Uh, one, uh, Tim, uh, while you were serving as governor, a terrible tragedy hit um, the Virginia Tech campus on April 16th. All Virginians came together. The president came together, you did, and I thought you did an outstanding job, Tim, uh, in a time of tragedy. And all Virginians, and regardless of where somebody went to college in Virginia or elsewhere, were united uh, and really admired everything that everyone did in, in that very good community. And, and um, that's the first thing I thought of when I started hearing about what happened in Aurora, Colorado. And, I thought of my daughter, too, that she might go to a movie theater and so forth. And so all of us as parents uh, think of this in a very personal way. I think we need to determine the facts, what's going on, what happened. Uh, you listed some of them. Right now, there are law enforcement people, as last I saw, that were going into this person's, this murderer's home, and that it may be booby trapped. So uh, let's get all the facts before we start getting into political matters. I am for criminal records check. When I was a member of the General Assembly, I had Mr. Jefferson's seat, and I, there was my amendment that said that when anybody's buying a, a firearm, that there'll be, regardless of the firearm, that there'll be an instant criminal records check. And I do think those criminal records checks, including mental disorders or drug abuse, are indicated in any firearm purchases. But I think we need to wait to get all the facts and then make decisions as to what can be done when such an aberrant uh, act occurs. Governor Kane, you have a minute to respond to that, but let me see if I can get you directly to the question. Knowing what we know now, are there enough gun laws we could impose that would stop someone from doing this if they have a clean record? Well, well it would be complete hubris to say we can put a policy in place that would keep bad things from happening. Bad things are going to happen. We can't stop them. But what we should try to do is learn and fix them and then minimize the chances of these things happening. Uh, I'm pleased to hear George and I stand here and agree on background records checks. People can go into gun shows and buy weapons now, and they could be felons. They could be under a domestic violence protective order. They could be criminally ill, adjudicated, and dangerous. And, and yet they could get these weapons and do horrible things. Records checks are not even really a new law. It's the only way to enforce the existing law. And the fact that I'm a little surprised, but the fact that we agree on that is a good thing. Um, we do need to get more facts on the issue of the magazines and the kinds of weapons. You know, I, I'm a proud supporter of the Second Amendment. I work with colleagues at my law firm as the legal counsel on the effort when the amendment was made to uh, protect Virginians' right to hunt and fish. Senator Cree Deeds, I think, was the key sponsor of that, who's right here in the room. And I worked as a lawyer to help that succeed. But the kinds of weapons and ammunition that are just used to mete out, you know, pain and, and death on scores of people, you know, we ought to be reasonable about that. Governor Allen, let's take a 90-degree uh, turn, and you can use your time if you wanted to. to let, let me just, for a point of clarification, as so you're asking added added question to it, I ought to get some time to ask, answer your added question. I do think there ought to be uh, criminal records checks uh, from licensed firearms dealers. Uh, that is a, a distinction there. I don't want to mislead and have my opponent on that. I don't think with the, the, this person, as you laid, uh, laid out the facts, bought these firearms from licensed firearms dealers. Uh, we will need to learn more. And there may, needs to, may have needed to be, as we find out more about this person and his motivations, of, of reporting that so that it shows up on the criminal records check. But the solution is not to take away the rights of law-abiding citizens to protect themselves or their, or their families. Okay, Governor, let, let me turn you 180 degrees here. I want to talk about the economy. We've got a number of questions from this audience that dealt with the fiscal cliff that you referred to in your opening statement uh, and the nation's mounting debt. There was a famous moment in the Republican primary when all the Republican candidates on the stage were asked, would you agree to a tax increase if you were assured it was going to be accompanied by spending cuts worth 10 times the amount of the tax increase. They all said no. What do you say? Well, I'll say what I heard from a small business owner in Bedford. And I asked him, what would you like to see the federal government do? And he told me, he said, I'd like to see the government get off my back and out of my pockets. And I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, 
after seeing so much waste of the taxpayers' money in Washington, why, why should Washington, why should the federal government take even more? I'm, I'm, I would want to go to Washington to actually protect hardworking taxpayers. Uh, we need a government that is more efficient, is more effective, it's focused on its priorities and accountable. And I think that we ought to have a tax code that is more simple, more fair, and more competitive. Right now, the federal government imposes the worst in the world, highest tax on job creating businesses in the world. It ought to be a lower, flatter, more simple tax. That'll create jobs. My perspective is, is raising taxes will only create more job losses. So raising that, taxes do not create more jobs, except maybe at the IRS. Is that a no to the direct question of, you've got a deal, it's 10 times as many spending cuts as the tax increase, you wouldn't take that deal? I've seen these deals in the past, and what happens, they keep spending. Okay, they so keep no. spending and there's fewer jobs. What we need is a more simple, fair, and competitive oh. tax system in our country. That's what I want to work on okay. in the United States Senate, not finding ways to take more money out of hardworking taxpayers and small business owners. Okay, I'm already blowing a hole in the rules. That's a no. Yes, that's pretty pretty obvious. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Okay, thank you. I, Governor Kane, your chance to respond to well, anything that the... Uh, yeah, I, I have a very different view. I, I've, I've cut a lot of taxes as mayor utility taxes, business license taxes, real estate taxes as governor, worked on the deal to eliminate the estate tax in Virginia, took hundreds of thousands of working Virginians off the income tax rolls, but you also, and, and I've done a lot of expense cuts, but we do need more revenue to solve this problem. How do we get into this fiscal cliff situation? We got into it by doing two things wrong. First, there was significant fiscal irresponsibility in Washington, and much of it occurred when, when George Allen was serving in the United States Senate dramatically expanding Medicare without paying for it, waging two wars without paying for them, um, uh, tax cuts without paying for them, making them temporary and now saying we're going to make them permanent. Fiscal irresponsibility hurt us. Second, um, there was a my way or the highway attitude. When people were trying to work out a deal last summer, George was one of the people standing against Governor McDonald and Eric Hanner and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce saying, no, we should use the debt ceiling vote as a leverage to try to get more cuts. He wanted more cuts than we got last summer, and that's why we're where we are today. What we need to do is we need to grow the economy by leveling the playing field for small businesses, by talent investments and in infrastructure. We need to make significant cuts, and I know how to make them. And we also need to let the Bush tax cuts expire at the top end. If we let the Bush tax cuts expire over $500,000, it will, it will produce deficit reduction of about $600 billion over the next 10 years, and it would be the right thing to do. 